here is a submission required for provision. Now that is really key as we move into the season ahead, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about the harvest ahead. Now, confess over somebody near you, there's a harvest for you. Now confess this over them, you're part of the harvest. So, let's, let's move forward and let's look at this. See, the earth has times where it brings forth its harvest. We've been going through in this new era, and you, you have to remember that starting in 2019 at Rosh Hashanah, this week, 2019, we shifted over into a new era. Now, we really didn't come into the fullness of that until we crossed over at a very unusual Passover in March of 2020. And uh, that Passover, God ordained that Passover. See, you go back to the original Passover, and the Lord uh, had all of the Hebrew people pull aside in their homes and do Passover. They had to recognize the blood. They had to recognize the lamb. And it was a requirement for their protection. Now notice what happened the first time historically since the original Passover that you saw written about in the Word of God on March 2020, God did it again. But he just didn't have the Hebrew people pull aside. In their house, because see, we've had huge Passover gatherings because it was important for the body to understand Passover. So years ago, I started doing Passover, got lots of flack for it. Uh, and I said, well, if you'll show me Easter in the Word of God, we'll go Easter, you know. <laughs> but the only thing in the Word of God Yeshua did was Passover. So we're going to have to stick with the blood concept of Passover and the cross. And so in the midst of that, we had always done these big things. But every year, Robert would say, but biblically, Passover, you had to be behind the door of your house. I said, well, one day God will do that. But until he does that, we've even we've got to get the body of Christ worldwide to recognize that Passover really is what exists. And uh, that every year when we celebrate that, it is we are being protected. We're setting a bloodline, the bloodline of the Lord Jesus Christ for that year the ultimate sacrifice. And so we would just continue on, but on March 2020, God did it. He didn't just pull aside the Hebrews. He pulled aside the one new man, all Jew and Gentile, all that knew him. We were all behind our closed door celebrating Passover. It was some sort of phenomenon that I don't want any of us to miss because it started, it actually initiated, it, it catapulted us into this era of what we call the harvest era. And so that becomes very, very important for us as we advance in this season, it literally changed my life. It caused things God had been saying to me for uh, the last several years for me to have to pull aside and say, okay, now it's the time for me to enter into that new season. And you can read about that in Passover Prophecies that's out there. That book will be very, very significant for us through this entire decade that we're in. It's a, it's a good book. But it, what happened was it initiated so many other things God had been saying. 
this book, A Kingdom, uh, A Triumphant Kingdom, that was initiated here at Liberty Park in 2008. So, New Jersey and the 13 original colonies have always been probably uh, the place where God initiated what I would be about for the next season, uh, including uh, when I surrendered to him in uh, uh, 1972, me meeting my wife at the altar who was from New Hampshire. So, you see, there's something about this region that God is looking at to come down in that will change an entire nation. And so, that's why I, because over this past year and a half, my life has changed. I I went from traveling 575,000 miles a year all over the world and getting to be with John Price and a team, you know, and I, I, let's thank God for John. He brings life to the body. Ooh, we could tell you some things. Uh, uh, and, uh, and so, and I knew I had to go into, as Peter said, our next building season. See, my whole life has been part of a rebuilding our building project. And uh, I don't always let people know all that I can do because I'll end up having to do things I don't want to do. So, Chad, so you do not give Chad a microphone. Uh, uh, one time we were somewhere and a diesel truck broke down and I said I know how to fix that truck and somebody said that is the biggest craziness I have ever heard I said I worked at a truck stop for four years doing that while I was in college knew immediately what was wrong with it uh, uh, that is a secret not to be shared <laughs> So I just act dumb a lot. You know, David acted dumb a lot. I remember that. He acted like a fool with the Philistines to get away from them. Sometimes you're going to have to lay down all you know and act like a nut. <laughs> that, sound, that sounded really important for you. Uh, <laughs> 